Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips and this is Oliver and Oliver is a golden doodle so he is about a year and a half years old and he's about 52 pounds and um, today we're going to give him a full groom um, I have my student here Taylor who's going to be filming and helping me with that otherwise it'd be hard to get the angles because he is a little bit bigger of a guy as you can tell and um, we're going to be looking through some matting that he has and um, as with lots of golden doodles they get really thick fur and then it really mats up there as well and so I'm going to actually groom half the body and then uh, it'll give Taylor an idea of what she needs to do for the other half so just uh, Taylor's going to take over the camera now and then I'm going to start grooming him so I have a table here that can raise up and down for me so Taylor was good and then he's all fresh and clean now he's had his nice bath um, but he does have quite a bit of heavy matting in here as I mentioned earlier we did uh, Taylor did comb out the ears already um, but we're going to trim him up um, he also has quite a bit of matting underneath the chin as you can see it's right close to the chin um, and when I talked to the owner when she dropped him off we're going to just try to make him as comfortable as possible so rather than trying to keep him um, with the longer face and longer top of the head like the you know you generally do for the poodle this time we're going to take it down um, so I'm just going to trim up his face here and like I said I'm only going to do half the body because Taylor is going to be doing the other half so we are just going to get him so he can see a little bit here and the golden doodles have wonderful temperaments they're quite relaxed on when being groomed. They are the biggest type of dog that I do when I'm grooming. I usually stick with small dogs, but um, over the years, as my clients got new puppies, they'd ask me to groom their golden noodles, and so I'd start them out as puppies, and um, uh, they've kind of been really great to work with, so I don't mind doing the golden noodles um, as my largest dog that I do. So. You know, so we do still have some matting under here as well. So I'm not going to worry about scissor cutting that. I'm just going to be taking the, the clippers to that. So any less, the less amount of stress I can do on the dog, um, that's what I'll do. And that's what we're trying to aim for. So we're going to try to keep some muzzle, even though there's matting underneath. We'll see what happens because sometimes when I take the clipper to it and then I blow dry it out, we may be able to still salvage some of it. So I don't want to take it right down the face yet. Okay, and the rest is going to be clippers. Um, and I will try to do as long as I can, but basically this right here is going to determine how long I can cut the rest of the body as well. So that's where I start. So I look for the heaviest matting, and that's what I try to start with. So I'm going to try for a five, because um, sometimes when the hair is a little bit damp, and I use a split tooth, as well because that helps to get through the mats a little bit because it has that um, just gives a little bit of break in between each comb and sometimes it'll actually go through the mats but again I'm not gonna be too worried if I can't get through them because we're just going for the comfort for the dog here and this is the heaviest part of the body the rest of the, um, her, his fur, sorry, is uh, not as thick. So sometimes if it's just really thick in one area like this, I'll kind of sacrifice you know, my time to get this out because I know the rest of the body will go through a lot easier. So because it's heavily matted, you want to make sure that the skin, because it is loose, as you can tell here, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't, um, you know, catch the skin as well. All right, so that's the basic of that. So now I'm just going to try to go back to the head. And again, so I 
I kind of pull the hair and the skin a little bit taut so that it will kind of get catch that. And so this is a little bit easier than the other one. And I do like to use uh, metal metal combs and the metal blades that attach and detach rather than the clippers that you buy that have the, the plastic combs because they will be very hard to go through this type of fur. It's still a little bit difficult here. Oh, and my clippers just gave up on me there. So we switch blades. And I'm thinking that I'm going to have to go to number seven after all. Just because it is so thick and it is not going through that easy. And um, I just don't want to be pulling on the skin that much. So I've switched to a number seven blade now. As you can see, it goes through a lot easier. And um, it's just a little nicer on the dog as well, of course, and that's our main objective. So the shoulder blades are right here, so you have to be careful when you're going around them. Because they can be a little bit bony, so just be aware. Basically, as soon as you're grooming and you hit any resistance at all, you stop and kind of check it out to see why, why there's resistance. If it's a mat, or if it's a wart, or if it's the bones, um, because just how they're laying or sitting. It's always best to be safe that way. And with the skin, I'm sorry, with the fur being a little bit damp as well, that is um, nice to keep your blades cooler. So, but you always want to keep checking on your blades to make sure that they stay nice and cool. Because you don't want to burn the skin of the dog, which can happen. But um, because we gave them a bath prior to this, that really helps. Um, you keep those blades a little cooler otherwise they will heat up quite quickly especially when the dog's fur is so thick um, and has mats in it they can really heat up okay so I'm gonna get them to stand so you just kind of do it that way and I do have them on a table so it is nice even though they are big it's nice to have them on a table so that they know they're here to be groomed so when you put them on that table they understand the purpose of why they're there and what's going to happen and that uh, that's what needs to be done kind of thing so they kind of understand the process they may not like it and that's my dog too I still got to chase him down even for his groomings but when he's up here he knows you know that's what it is it's time to be groomed so It's got to be careful because the bones, you don't want to grab any of them, so. And I do have lots of other videos on my channel as well of other breeds that I've groomed or, or other health concerns or issues that I've noticed and recognized in the dogs that I kind of point out and do short little videos on as well. So if that's anything that you might be interested in, please subscribe to my channel. I do like to post videos regularly, and uh, currently I'm doing them every day. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd appreciate if you subscribed. Also, you can comment in any of the videos that I have, just to let me know if there's something specific you'd like to see. So I'm going to go upwards on the back here. And I can put that on for you as um, as it becomes available opportunity for me to groom a dog with uh, whatever request you have. Okay, so I'm going to go back in under his area here just with a number 10. So I'm not going to worry about getting that right now. So under here, under the belly, 
Um, the skin is quite loose, so you kind of want to pull the skin up, and then it kind of drags that fur underneath as well. So just like that, and that gets all of that under there. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch. Go to the shoulder up here, and check my blades. They're still doing okay. And this is where it was a little bit more heavier matted. And this, some, there's a little bit of matting on the top here, so I'm just going to go just a little bit down the ear. But I don't want to take all that off. And then I'm going to pull the ear nice and tight to get all that as well. And in here, I don't want to use the clippers because um, the skin in there is easily can get caught. So I just want to kind of be around the ear, but not the ear itself. Alright, so I just want to make sure I know what I'm doing there. So it's quite a bit thicker there. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to switch the blades because it was just starting to get warm. So I'll get another one here. And I'll continue on. And it is quite thick there. So it's always good to make sure that skin is pulled tight. And I'm just going to go basically from the back of the, the eye there and just downwards. So I'm still going to keep kind of like a little muzzle on him. And we'll see what um, survives them when I do that. I'll come back to the right under the chin where it is quite heavy. We're going to try to salvage a little bit and then make sure right underneath the chin here this is it's really loose skin so you really got to make sure you kind of flatten it out so that you can get under those mats and of course so you're not pulling on any of that skin all right so we'll stick to this side And this really gives your shoulders a workout. I usually like to have this size of dog, the very last dog of my day, because they are, although very gentle, they are a lot of work on your body. Because you're stretching a lot more and a lot more um, bending and stuff as well for the lifting. Right, so the leg here. doesn't like his front foot being touched here. Not too bad though. <laughs> okay. okay, clippers are still at good temperature. So we'll move them over a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna go upwards on the inside because again, that's where it's prone to be matting. But once I get close to the armpit, I'm actually gonna, because there's so much loose skin on these types of dogs, um, I'm gonna actually use a number 10. So I'm not gonna do the armpit area yet. I'm gonna go a little bit further out and just do that chest, finish off that chest area. But as you can see, it's quite heavily matted as well. So I'm just gonna go right to number 10. So I'm not tugging on that fur. Alright, okay. And then we can really get in those armpits there. You can really see that there's quite a bit of mats in there, but these armpits go really deep as you can see. So it takes a little bit to get in there. 
because sometimes it's hard to start it. You gotta kind of do a little bit of digging back and forth to see how you can catch it. And that's why you don't want to use a number seven. Okay, I might just have to go in here and straighten out the skin a little bit. And it's moving so much, when I lift the leg, I can't actually get it with the clippers. There we go. Okay, so we got it there. So sometimes you just got to kind of maneuver to kind of get it there. Okay, so that's that. And now I'm going to go in the upper side, the inner side of his leg. Again, you always check the blades. So this area is always prone to matting as well. And of course, there's lots of sensitive areas in there, but they are prone to matting. So I like to take them down as well. any loose skin of course in this area as well okay and um, for his tail it's actually quite matted as well we were gonna comb it out and use the thinning shears um, but after seeing how thick it is in there as well we actually are gonna do it the same length as the body and I know I'm gonna switch to number seven again do half the tail for allow Taylor you know get some excitement doing the other half so basically we just want to go downwards and sometimes we're able to salvage a little bit of the tail even though we're using the clippers and you just want to be careful so it, um, at the end of the tail it doesn't go in between there of course so you're not catching anything You can see it's quite thick in there. Okay, so that takes all that out. And then I am going to do his bum area with a number 10. Just gonna have to scooch him around. All right, so I'm gonna scooch him to the other side. You're gonna come back. All right. So I'm working on this side here. So I have the number ten. You basically, just lift the tail straight up. go. All right, so we've done that. Okay, and we're gonna bring him back to how he was. And now I'm gonna do his feet because I haven't trimmed his feet yet. He actually doesn't have too much hair underneath his pads. Their pads are nice and big so it's easy to get in between there as well. I do use scissors um, but you can use a number 40 blade in between the pads as well if that's your preference. I find that the scissors work really good though with the mats because in between the toes here um, you could use the 40 blade but I don't um, I think that might irritate the feet. I've always used scissors so I am com more comfortable with them. And again, there's a little bit of matting in here as well. You can see there's a big mat in between the toe here. 
that I am going to get out. So again, I just come from the bottom and go through the toes and kind of pull it up as I go. And just trimming off the top a little bit and then working my way down. I don't try to go right to the bottom off the bat um, because then it'll loosen a little bit as I take a little bit off. And there we go. So same with this one here, there's another mat. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim his nails. The key is just to hold on. There we go, good boy. Almost done. Okay, so now I'm going to just trim here. I didn't use the scissors or the clippers in there. I'm just going to do it by scissors. Because you always got to be careful on the front. They always have that extra pad up there. So just because there was matting, I didn't want a chance um, accidentally hitting it with the clippers because it was so thick, the fur. Same with this paw. There's not too much fur in here. There's no matting in between the pads, which is nice. I've seen dogs with lots of matting in there as well, you know, so it's nice to see. You don't have to work with that. And there's some mats there, so I'm just going to go slowly and just take a little bit out at a time. Not worried about getting it all at once because you want to make sure you're not grabbing any skin as well in there. So every time you do snip it out, you want to pull out that hair. Okay. He wants to lay down here, so I'll just let him. Okay. Well, that is that portion. So for the face here, I'm going to also take this off. the other stuff off so all right now we're going to see how the ears are I'm going to comb it out a little bit a little bit of matting up there I'm just going to layer it downwards because we usually layer it anyways so I'm also take some of that bulk off so maybe when I'm combing it out I won't have as much resistance Also gonna trim it up. Use your thumb as a guide to make sure you're not cutting the skin. And there's some matting in here as well. So instead of starting with the comb, I'm actually gonna um, use the thinning shears to start thinning that out right away just because it is thick. There's not too much else in here for mats I can tell so we're gonna see where that that helps get it all out. There's a little one here too, a chunk. So I use my thumb underneath the mat to making sure again that I'm not gonna cut the skin of the ear. So by using the thinning shears, I'm able to get through those mats a little easier.
up here. So there's the mats coming out. You can see it's quite thick. But by using the thinning shears, it really helps. So you're not really tugging too much on the ears because it releases quite quickly. So again, there's some mats on this side. So we'll have too much in there left. And then once I get all the mats out, that's when I go back and I'll uh, <laughs> um, trim up the ears again. And we can see what we're working with. And then I do use the scissors just to trim this hair out because it is quite a bit thicker so you don't want to make sure you're you don't want to be plucking that hair by accident out otherwise it'd be really thick and there's a little bit of hair in there but actually not too bad for a golden doodle must have more of the golden interior ears um, a lot of the the doodles have quite thick hair in the ears so this guy luckily does not Okay, and then I'm just going to re-round it out again. Okay, so that's that. And then last, we're going to see what we can do with that chin. See how his muzzle is. So again, that has a little bit of mats in it as well. I'll see if I can thin some of it out so that we don't have to shave it, but no, I think it's too thick. So we are just gonna have to go underneath there with the number seven as well, just to take that out, because otherwise it's gonna be too hard for the, him to be combing that out. And I think I'm... So I'm gonna hold on just right under his lip there. Up. And again, just be careful of any loose skin. And there we go, so we can get underneath that. I'm not going to take it all off because that will leave that fun time for Taylor. Shorter. Now that we've had to go shorter on the chin, I'm going to go shorter on the face because, of course, we want it all to match a little bit. And I'm going to try not to go straight right to the body, right to the skin. And still leave a little bit of muzzle. And then when you do trim it, see some of the mats will come out. It's not as long. There's just one there edge of his lip so I don't want to really tug too much there I'll just cut that out go down on an angle okay and there we go 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up the table a little bit, get my stuff off there and get some of the fur off. And I'm going to give them a quick blow dry on this half of the body. And then we'll see how it fluffs up and then I'll be able to go over it one more time with the number seven. And then, uh, no. yeah, I'll hold it. So we're just putting our earmuffs on right now. And then we'll be able to get started on the blow dry. We also tend to wear masks when we groom because of all the hair flying around as well. So I'm just gonna blow dry. quite a bit once you give that second blow dry. So actually now I'm going to use a number five so that we can try to keep some of that length. And even when you do um, a, a groom on a dry dog, it's good to give them a little bit of a fluff after with a blow dryer or something because you might be able, then you'll get all these ones that get missed. So you think you got it all and then after you see one here and there. So it just gives it a nice cleaner finish look when you do come back again and just finish up. So this number five will still take off a little bit and those are just evening it all out. So now we're able to still get that little bit longer. As we had hoped we'd get in the beginning. In here you got to push out the fur and the skin a little bit to get it to come out and usually I'll just kind of pull that and just on the edge here you can see there's a bit but because that skin is so loose I'm going to go back to the number 10 because I don't really I really don't want to catch any of that and so I'm going to get him to lift his leg here I'm just going to get that edge of the leg there that I missed before. There's lots of loose skin in there. back to the number five and just finish up here on the neck. See, and the number five will not go through those mats. So that's why you gotta start with the number seven. All right, and there we go. So there is a half groom 
of a golden doodle who is quite matted. And it gives you an idea of what tools you need to use to get that done. Trim that up. Then you'll still have a little bit of a muzzle, but not very much, just because of this big mat that was there. So, kind of gives you an idea of uh, how to do a golden doodle and a nice little cut. So it's a little shorter because <laughs> of all the mats. Um, but the mats were so thick that we kind of didn't have a choice uh, to go shorter, so. And there we go. So now Taylor will know what she needs to do to groom the other half of him. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos of me grooming um, various breeds of dog. Make sure you get the old guy. And, um, and I appreciate your time for watching and uh, thanks Taylor for videotaping this for me so that we get a better viewing angles because it's really hard with a guy this big to get him all in the camera while I'm trying to groom as well. So um, thanks for taking the time and I hope you have a great day.